Pardon the interruption. I'm Jared Ware. And though the semester may be winding down to a halt, PTR is still ratcheting it up here inside the Anchor TV studio. Pardon the interruption. I'm Dan Sharis. We got a crazy show for you today. Ten yeah. topics. I didn't have anything to say after that PTR, but it's just hey. the, the semester is coming to an end. I've been mentally everybody's not there. celebrating. We're celebrating here on PTR. We're gonna give you ten good. Topics to get you ready What's for the, Tell me what the hashtag is. Hashtag, as always, if you want to get in on the debate, he's got 27 tattoos. Maybe you've heard the song, I Would by I One Direction. With your boyfriend. He's, he's got, got 27 tattoos. tattoos. Louis Tomlinson, retweet this show, please. <laughs> Let's get to the first topic here as we just embarrass ourselves a little bit with the I, vocal I did not embarrass ability. myself. <laughs> Let's do it. All you. <laughs> All right, so the Pats, 9-3. and three. We saw the Ravens lose this week. Texans are coming into town this week. Four games left in the regular season for the Patriots. What seed do you think they're going to get in this playoffs? Two seed. Like the way they're playing football. Like the way the defense is playing. The offense looks good. Obviously, I think the offense can continue to get better, uh, especially when Gronkowski comes back from injury. Brandon Lloyd had a quiet week last week. If he comes, comes around, the running game looks good. Three running backs so we can just keep keep rotating in and out. Love what those three guys do. And they're, none of those three are the same back. You get Vereen, who can take it between the tackles, catch it out of the backfield. Woodhead, he can catch it out of the backfield primarily. And, and Ridley, between the tackles runner. Like the way the Pats are playing right now, I think they'll beat Houston on Monday. Really positions them to get the two seed. I think Houston will finish as the one seed at the end of the day. Like the Pats at the two, they get themselves a nice buy. And position himself for a nice playoff run this you, year. You, you gotta like the buy right there. Yeah, I'm going right here. I'm going three seed. And I'll yeah. tell you okay. why. I don't trust the Ravens. They lost last yeah. week to a Steelers team that yeah. had Charlie Batch. Yeah, the elderly Batch. He was still them. zinging it though. I only watched the first half, then I had to hit the snooze button, and he was awful. Overthrew Mike Wallace in the end zone. But he was zipping a it. Good, a good twenty feet because he was on my fantasy team, and I ended up losing. If he scored, I would have won. Yeah, still in the playoffs, whatever. So I'm going three seed right here. I got Texans going one. I got the Pats losing an, a, okay. another one of these games. Okay. I don't know. I just don't feel confident yep. about this team. They didn't play good last week. The yep. offense, if Tom Brady doesn't play good, it's been this way for the last four years. The Pats are going to lose yep. a game. I, I think it's. I think it's going to happen one of these next two weeks. Couple Jacksonville. Days, tough Jacksonville. They're not going to lose. Jacksonville's yeah. awful. Miami at home. Ryan Mount will play the whole second yep. half of that game. So. I'm going. Uh, I'm going two seed. Yep. I'm going. The Ravens are going to be the four seed. I'm going Broncos at two because the Broncos and the okay. Ravens play two weeks from okay. now. So that, that's a showdown right there. Okay. And the Broncos have just been reeling, reeling, feeling real good. Yeah. No, I I, I like that. Pick. That's uh, that's a good playoff picture right there. The Broncos under the radar right now though. They could finish in that two spot as you mentioned. Yes. Under the radar right now, even with Peyton Manning, I like the way that team's playing. Sayer Benninger likes the way that team's playing right now. Sayer Spice Lattes. Let's pumpkin get spice lattes. Pumpkin spice lattes for everyone. Next topic. So should the NFL eliminate kickoffs? They've been talking about it this week. It's come up before in the past. Should they get rid of them? No. Okay. What? Well, you are sim the, the kickoff is a symbolization yeah. of, a, of the game starting. What are yeah. you going to do now? Yeah. All right, here's the first play of the game. We're just going to put the ball down at the 20-yard line, say hike. No, you got to kick the ball off. I mean, I know it's losing a lot of luster because of the 35 yards yep. they're kicking it off from now. So there's a lot of touchbacks. Yep. Y you you, you got to kick it off. Yep. What what kind of football game? Th that's yep. not even football. What? That's the one of the two parts of the games where you actually use your foot. Yeah. Is is on the kickoff? Actually, yep. there's three punts and field goals. Yeah. And then what if you, what do you want to do when you onside kick? You gotta you yeah. gotta implement that kind of strategy. So if you want to onside kick it, how are you gonna do that now? They'll probably have some awful rule where the team will get great field position if they onside kick it and they eliminate kickoffs. It'll be so stupid. Another thing about kickoffs that really annoys me, because they moved it to the 35-yard line, anybody who catches it within the first five yards of the end zone takes it back, gets to, like, the 15. Yeah. Take a knee, idiot. Yeah, well, these guys just want to make plays. They can, yeah, the and then they can do it, make plays. Then, then you, gotta you don't get to go three and risk. out. You go three and out, and then yeah, you punt well, it. You've got to be, be, you be willing to take risks with, in this new system. I think if they were going to get rid of kickoffs, you go to the XFL. If you remember the XFL, yeah, they I, do. I, toss I know exactly it. what you're going to say. They didn't coin toss it, fumble drill. Whoever gets the loose ball gets possession. And you could probably start that. You know, you start on the 10, you start rolling the ball. Whoever gets on it first, it's only two guys. You really can't get hurt doing that drill. Like, it's not even possible doing it. I think that would be fun to watch. I, you know, it's kind of stupid. That's, that is so dumb. It's the NFL. We're not. Yeah, but this I league think is not run by Vince McMahon. I think it would be fun to watch week in and week out every game. I think it's more interesting than watching 
Steven Gostkowski booted out of the back of the end zone eight times in a game. I mean, it's pointless. And then all you get is that at least when they usually take it off uh, where they have a chance to return it, all right, so they go, the commercial, team scores, commercial, kickoff, touchdown on a kickoff, that's fun. Now it's touchdown, commercial, kicks it off through the back of the end zone, commercial, then you come back. Stupid. Do something in that period because it's awful. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say about kickoffs, but we're just going to have to wait for another day to talk about it. Okay. Topic number three. All right, so we got some MVP debate yep. coming down. The NFL season is three quarters of the way over. Just terrible. But we have two candidates right now that are separating themselves from the pack. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. They, I think you've got to put Andrew Luck in there. I said Andrew Luck a few weeks ago. I was going to ask the there. question, but you just, Get you him just in go. There. Just go. Go ahead, no. But no, go. All right, so the question is, does it irk you that Manning's getting more MVP talk? It irks me that these two guys are getting more talk than Andrew Luck. Because guess what? The Colts, they've won eight football games. They're going to be in the AFC playoffs this year. Guess what? They had the first pick in the draft last year. That means they had the worst season last year in the NFL. Well, so this if you is remember, an unbelievable if you go back, turnaround. They, they, they could have won more games. Five, five comeback drop. victories for Andrew Luck as a rookie, and that comeback against Detroit last week. Now, what constitutes was a comeback victory? Believable. Anytime you're losing, believable. So the team yes. Scores, the, anytime the, you're losing, okay. you come back and win. That's why you use the word comeback. Field goal in their first That's drive. why you use the word Three comeback. Three nothing comeback victory. Comeback. You haven't even got the ball yet. Five comeback, comeback, comeback victories for Andrew Luck this year as a rookie. Unbelievable. That late drive, you, when the Colts got the ball, you said this is a rookie, terrible field position to start this drive. There's no way. And he just made dude, 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 throw dude. after throw after throw after throw. And then a, in a clutch third down situation, short clock, he needs to make the play to win the game, and he gets out of the pocket, makes the throw. Unbelievable job by this guy. I'm giving him the MVP this year. He's been tremendous, the most valuable player to his football team this year, easily. Andrew Luck? Easily. Threw a couple ducks against the Patriots. Easily. Um, when I was watching that game the other day, I thought Marty Schottenheimer was coaching the Lions. That's, is, that, is that who he's coaching now? No. Jim Schwartz, yeah, I'm just kidding. But if, if you go along with those same lines, Schwartz has just been awful late in these games this year. Just, I just think terrible. it was more luck. But it does I think hurt. it was luck. We're trying to talk Brady and Manning. I'm going to switch, I don't I'm gonna switch either back. I guys should win the MVP. Peyton Manning gets the MVP every year. We Come won on. 11 games without Tom Brady this year, let's be honest. Uh, I don't know about that. Matt Castle's the worst quarterback in the league, and we won 11 games with Matt Castle. Matt Castle is not the worst quarterback in the league. He's pretty, he's pretty close. He is he's pretty not bad. the worst. He's he, pretty he close. Is, he is pretty bad, but I, Manning gets MVP talk every uh, year. I can't. Ned. No. Ned. <laughs> Nate Bissell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway. Nate Bissell just walked in, and that's him right there. He's a Hollister model. Anyways. Anyways, anyways. It does irk me that Manning is getting more votes because he gets votes every year. And Tom Brady is having another stellar year. This guy's on a roll like you would never see the, never see a quarterback have this good of a role. This, this is over like 10 years now. Guy's just been slinging it. I think. Great, great quarterback. Look at 24 touchdowns, four picks. Give me number 12. Wearing that white, wearing that blue. I love me some Andrew Luck. I think he's Ned. fantastic. You I think RG3 as well, well is great. Those two guys are going to be unbelievable. I, I joked about an RG3 Manning Super Bowl. Washington's getting closer to the playoffs. They look Buddy, pretty good. Six and six. They look pretty good. They're getting closer to the top of the NFC East. They could win that division. They're in the playoffs. Colts are no, in the playoffs. No uh -oh. way the Redskins are making the Super Bowl. They, they, but they could get to the playoffs, and then you don't know what you get to the playoffs. You don't know what you get into the you, tournament. Did, did you think last year Andy Dalton was going to go anywhere? No, you didn't. I, I thought they could have won some games. They played the Bengals, they're coached by Marvin Lewis. They played pretty tough against Houston. Whoa, look out, two rookies. Could, could happen. Next topic, we're already there. Is doping a problem in the NFL? Jermaine Cunningham suspended for four games. The second pass this year he gets suspended due to doping. Is it an issue? I think I think the NFL doesn't really care about this. I yeah. mean, we've talked about this private, not privately, but not on on television. Yeah. Um, like you said, four games for the NFL, and then you never see anybody get suspended yeah. again. Never have you seen somebody get suspended yeah. again. The drug here that everyone seems to be using now is Adderall. I was really happy that the guy from Seattle, Richard Sherman, he he got caught because that guy just runs his mouth. Good cornerback runs his mouth. You know. Well, I think if Brady, like, I think the issue that stems with most New England fans is. He went up into Brady's face, but if Brady was talking smack and said, talk to me after the game, and they won, go up and talk, I'm fine with that. You're asking for it. You, you would be asking for it, but uh, I think, yeah, like like you're probably going to reiterate here, nobody cares in the NFL yeah. when, when you get doped, yeah. like, charges against you. Yeah. Baseball, it's like, all right, you're never going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot harder for you to sign a free agent contract. Yeah. 
Uh, you're suspended 50 games. Next time's 100. Unless you have good behavior like Danny Ramirez, yeah. not 50. He got caught again in the Dominican League. Uh, yeah, what an idiot. Test, by the way. So, yeah, baseball, you're shunned out for life. Football, it's like, eh, Rodney Harrison did it. Look at him now. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Uh, I don't think anyone cares. I don't think the fans care. I don't think analysts care. I don't think GMs care. They want guys on the field and, and guys who get hurt. Uh, in the NFL, it's a different animal. Their, their guaranteed contracts are much scarcer. You, you got to be on the field. you got to earn your position. Look at Alex Smith. You get knocked out of a game, you could lose your job, and then you're out of the league in three years, maybe. So you got to keep your job. you got to do what you got to do. Cunningham, uh, a, a contract year, needed to play well, didn't play well. Has he been doping? I guess so. Do Has he been hurt? Nope. Because uh, all I'm thinking is, is four weeks from now, I want him back on the field playing that right defensive end, especially if Chandler Jones is out for any extended period of time as he's been with an ankle. I want him back. I want to play football the same way I want Brandon Bolden back. Don't care. Oh, I forgot all about Brandon Bolden. He had one good week. Yeah. Somebody spent 60 out of his 100 free agent dollars on him, and he's, the guy's been useless ever since. Yeah. Brandon Spikes, another guy that has yeah. uh, been just want him back. I want to see a kicker get charged with yeah, this or that a punter. Would be great. Yeah, that'll never. They don't get hurt, or they don't have to. You know. Yeah, they protect the, They protect the punters, protect the kickers. Next topic. All right, so we just had the unveiling of the BCS balls. That BCS, Last week, that BCS logo is from like 1990. I, I purposely grabbed it because I had missed like those 99. BCS days. That's when the BCS I liked watching college football BCS games. Once they went to Fox, hated it. So. Actually, 2001, the BCS was really in state until 2001, so that's like... That's 98, the 98 was the first year. Tennessee versus Florida State in the yeah. Fiesta Bowl. Okay, anyways. Um, outside of Notre Dame, Bama, the national title game, what's your favorite BCS ball? Well, not favorite, but one you are looking forward to the most. Orange Bowl, Northern Illinois, Florida State. Everyone's saying Northern Illinois has no chance in this game. Let's be honest. I, 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 I think Florida State's a decent team. They struggle against Georgia Tech. In that ACC championship game, they only won by seven points, and Georgia Tech is horrible. An, an, an awful team. Awful pro- well, not an awful program, but an awful team this year. So I'm not impl- impressed by Florida State. No one's giving Northern Illinois love. They got blasted for like ten minutes during the selection show by all the analysts just sitting there acting like Northern Illinois has no chance in this game. Why did you call up the 2007 Oklahoma Sooners team who played Boise State and lost that football game? Anything can happen once you step between those white lines. Jordan Lynch, great quarterback, dual threat, does it all for Northern Illinois. Pretty solid football team. Everyone goes, oh, they lost to Iowa by one the first week of the season. They've gotten better. Let's not play the game that that same team that lost to Iowa. They've gotten better. Uh, I think they'll be able to play Florida State tough. I think it'll be a good game. And all the other BCS games this year are garbage. Other than the national championship game, which Notre Dame's in it, pretty much garbage because they're going to get killed by Iowa. They're they're nine-point underdogs. Yeah, and they should probably be more than that. That game's going to be similar to Alabama-Michigan where it could be 35-7 after a quarter. And it, all right, so you forgot about one game that's decent. I mean, Louisville, Florida, awful. Yeah. Wisconsin, if you lose to Bert, yeah, I know which one you're going to Every one of those games where your coach leaves, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not really excited about. But a game that yeah, should be exciting is, is Kansas State yeah. and Oregon. These yeah. are two teams, three weeks ago we were talking about for yeah. the national title. Yeah. Now you get the Big 12 champion, Kansas State, playing Oregon, who lost yeah. one game by in overtime to Stanford, who won the, won the Pac-12 because yeah. of it. Two teams, two exciting teams, two teams that can put up a crazy amount of points. Yeah. This game's going to be probably 40 points each team yeah, will this have. Will be like so it'll be a really exciting game. Last, from last and, year. Yeah. you know, that's what I'm looking forward to about yeah. it. I do like the Northern Illinois Florida State choice because y- you always root for the underdogs, yeah. Northern Illinois. Um, I was actually really hoping that Alabama lost because it'd be really funny if Northern Illinois was in the bowl yeah. game and Alabama was not. And yep. then Nick Saban would be Pouty Face yep. even more than he actually is. Another good reason about Florida State, Northern Illinois, I have a good friend who's a Null fan. Great to crap on, and the no, the no's win. Just yeah. great. That'll be a good game. I don't know if Northern Illinois is going to be able to win the game, but it'll be a good game. Okay. Next, next topic. topic. Weird. Yeah, very much so. so. Should the Big East basketball schools jump ship and start their own conference? I don't think that will happen, but should they jump ship? I think they the Big East basketball schools, so you're going to be looking at Providence, you're going to be looking at Seton Hall, Georgetown, Nova. Some pretty good basketball schools. Yeah. St. John's, Marquette, DePaul. DePaul's yep. been awful. But shout get out to those Dan Pez Nola at Marquette right now. Anyways. Okay, shout out to, to Danny Pez Nola. Yeah. You call him Danny ever or just Dan? No, just Pez. Never call oh, him Dan. You call him Pez? Yeah, just Pez. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, take those seven schools. Take a few from the Atlantic 10 that are good. Butler, Temple's coming to the Big East next year anyways. Grab them even though they're a football school. Screw it. Grab them anyways. And then maybe like Dayton or something. Butler, Dayton, Xavier. Another good team. 10-11 team league, 
can be really a really solid small league. Everyone plays each other twice. You never see these small leagues anymore in big-time college basketball. The Atlantic 10, 16 teams. Pac-10 Pac goes to the Pac-12. They're, they're a terrible basketball conference, by the way. These schools yeah. for basketball should be should be leaving the conference because look at these schools that are bringing in. Tulane, they're never good at anything. Yeah. They're coming in. Central Florida, Houston. It's essentially Conference USA now. Yeah. That was what Jim Donaldson said in the Providence Journal like a week ago, and I was like, how have I not realized this? Yeah. Conference USA now, Big East. It's awful. Leave. I want Providence to leave. Screw this all this stupid football nonsense with basketball schools that are going to be awful yeah. now. And football schools are going to be awful too. I think awful, awful, awful. I think the basketball schools in the Big East that have football should leave. I think the other ones should just stay in the Big East. As big, the Big Because it's going to be better than if you leave and go to a smaller conference. Yes, that's brand, another thing. Just a Big that, East that, name that brand. I think you're all right. Basketball schools, there's still a bunch of just sort of primary basketball schools in the Big East. We'll be pretty good basketball teams. It won't be the same conference with Syracuse and Pitt uh, leaving and all that. UConn's probably going to fall suit pretty soon. Oh, UConn would go they, to the Pac-12 if they got offered. Yeah, so... I think if you have football and you're in the Big East right now, you should seriously seek other avenues right now. If you're a basketball school, stay put. Have that name brand, Big East, Big East Champs. It, it's pretty nice for you. Rutgers also on the way out. So but I would stay put. Don't panic. So See you're if saying you can bring some, peop bring some teams in. Talk some things out. People, there are going to be openings in the Big East. Maybe you can snag a few schools. No, nah, no, nah, you got it all wrong. I got it all wrong. No, I think you have it all wrong. Leave the conference. If the if the, all the basketball schools left the conference, start, there'd be like no charter start, members of the Big East left. It'd just be Conference USA. If you start a, a new conference, it's gonna be it's gonna be a joke, a legitimate joke. No, no, yeah, no. It will. It'll be a joke. It'll be a joke of a conference. Fact. You'll you'll, you'll get some good basketball. Half those teams will make the NCAA tournament every year. And it would be in a joke conference. Not at all. If half your teams yeah. make the NCAA tournament, what's the joke? I don't about think that? half. I don't think half the teams would make the NCAA. I tournament, looked. No matter. Five teams made it last year out of those ten I named you. Five teams the year before, I'm sure. Great league. Providence is still going to be awful, probably, but so be it. All right. Next topic. Should the Sox target Josh Hamilton? Josh Hamilton, the biggest free agent guy out there. Should the Red Sox target him? I think they should. I know the guy's had alcoholic problems. I know the guy's had drug problems. But people say he can't go to Boston because we have so much media here. I think that's a joke. I think that's a crock. Look, the guy, he can hit the ball. They don't have any outfielders, really. They're going to trade Jacoby Ellsbury before the start of the season. Get Hamilton, put him in right field. Move Victorino, the, the, another new signing, center. Look, you got your, You don't have a three-hitter right now. You don't have a, any power hitters whatsoever. Yep. David Ortiz, biggest power hitter. Guy's going to be hurt for half the season next year. Watch. Guy's like, what, 37 years old? Yeah. He's going to be hurt for the whole, half the season. Awful, awful contract that was. I'm not going to get into that. But sign Hamilton, decent defender, good hitter, stayed, stays healthy for the most part. You're gonna. The thing with Hamilton is, since his, his past, his deals are looking to be in the three to four year range. That'll be good for the Red Sox. He'll be like 35, 36 by the end of that. Yeah. Bring Hamilton in, maybe give him an extension if he's playing well. Probably won't. Just keep him for the three or four years. Pay him what? You got the money. Pay him twenty million a year. Who cares? Yeah. Um, I say you pay him. Uh, because in the Boston area, what you do, you get him into Boston. You say you're not going to live in Boston. We're going to have you move to like Weston. Ninth of the richest town in Massachusetts, Weston. Very nice. It's cut into the middle of the woods. There's nothing to do in Weston other than be really rich and sit in your huge house. Because, like I said, you just drive through the woods. And there's huge houses cut into the woods. Nothing there. Swamp land. So move him there. Can't get into any trouble there. He lives in a nice house, makes a lot of money, plays good baseball. Red Sox are fine. Yeah. Foolproof. Yeah. Foolproof. Weston, for the richest state, for the richest town in Massachusetts, you guys got to clean it up. It's awful. Really? Oh, it's terrible. Terrible high school? Yo, yeah, the, the, the terrible. It's one of those towns where they're so rich and they're all older people. The same is true with Wayland, who's like number five on the list or something like that. Their towns are so rich, but the people are so old that they don't want to raise taxes to pay for high school because obviously they don't go to high school anymore. Yeah, yeah. And they don't even have kids because they they're like 60 grandkids. years old. So. They don't care about the grandkids. No, they don't care at all. Everyone from, that's that's the word around Wayland West, and they don't want to pay for new schools. Schools have been around since like the 70s. Crazy question, what's the Wayland High School mascot? Oh, uh, the Warriors. That's what my high school was. Yeah, they have Everyone, this, every, every they have conference. The same, they have the same stupid tomahawk, oh. except it's black and orange. Oh. Next stop. Any high school that's the Warriors or anything high uh, Indian related, get the Indian head. Yeah. Not the spear. It's a, it's pretty offensive, though. 
Natick, I found I think out, the Indian head is respectful. I would love Natick, to, to have the Indian head. Natick, we talked about earlier in the year. They were the red and blue up until this year. They changed to the Red Hawks. Didn't we talk about this on yeah, a prior PTR? They changed to the Red Hawks this year. That's Go back to the Indian head. The spear, everyone uses. Everyone uses the spear. The spear, the spear. The Florida State spear. I have a little graphical issue here. I think the next topic was... Um, Rajan Rondo. Was is he a punk? Ra- yeah. Or is, is he not a punk? I would say he's not. I mean, he usually doesn't get it. He obviously got ejected from that game. He didn't get in it. He doesn't usually get ejected. Doesn't really get into any skirmishes like that. He's not kind of a fake tough guy like Kevin Garnett is at times. You think Kevin Garnett's fake tough? Yes, very much okay. so. Um, I think he's. I think he's a tough. I think he's tough, but the amount of tough he thinks he is, he's not, and that's where he's a fake tough guy. I think he's tough, not as tough as he thinks he is. Rondo, though, uh, I, I just think it was just one of those moments you just kind of lose your head. I think he's fine. I don't see anything punkish about Rajon Rondo. See, the play we're talking about that Chris Humphreys played when Rajon Rondo pushed Chris Humphreys after Kevin Garnett got a little shook. Not nothing yeah. too too serious. Let's just yeah. And Kevin Garnett fell into the crowd, whatever. Yeah. That happens because the cameraman is, like, here, the court's here. The people are going to fall. Um, yeah, so I don't think Rajon Rondo's fake, fake tough. I think he's sort of he's sort of punky, but I like the way he plays, you know? If he was on another team, I might like be like, what a punk Rajon Rondo is. But he's on the Celtics. I'm like, I like that. Your teammate gets shoved down. Shove the guy. Who cares? You might get thrown out. You might lose your yeah. history. Start another one next game. Yeah. So I like what Raj, Rajon Rondo is doing. Rajon Rondo had to use the Christian Bouchard voice right there at least once for this topic. Yeah. So, yeah, Punk. No. He might get. He probably would have got criticism if he didn't. Pl- yeah. If he didn't confront Chris Humphreys because of what he's done in the past with other things. D- Dwayne Wade, you saw. He's he's been in a few altercations. Just get that out of the way right there. So I say a little punky, a little edgy, but I like it. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I agree with you. They need a little there. spunk, you know. Teams yeah. need spunks. I know is that spunk yeah. for the Boston Celtics. Okay. That's why the, the Red Sox were awful this year because yeah. nobody was like nobody was any personnel. Yeah, but that was the most personnel. No was like energy points. whatsoever around that Red Sox team this year. It was awful because then you have sports radio talking about the Red Sox all year long. It's like they're well, awful. Well, that's what happens in the summer them. because there's nothing going on. It's really yeah. Really I would terrible. have had something to talk about because it was awful. Next topic. This is a good one too coming up. So what we have is the New Orleans Hornets. Changing their logo, starting maybe as soon as next year, to the New Orleans Pelicans. What would you have named this team if you could have named it? You know, I didn't think this one over too, too well. I do like the Pelican look. And I yeah. also like that Charlotte might be going back to the Hornets. Yeah. Which they need to bring the court back when it was like half teal, yeah. half, You're teal, all half, into half courts. purple. You're all into the courts. With the basketball in the middle? Yeah. Oh, that, what a court. Everyone loves, his, loves his hardwood. Loves his courts. Everyone would be all, all, all with me. Anyone who grew up in the 90s would be all over that. I get back the old Charlotte Hornet jerseys, yeah. great. Get, I do like the Pelicans. One suggestion I would make is to maybe ask Louisiana Lafayette University if they could do the Raging Cajuns now yeah. and have Louisiana Lafayette make a new nickname, the New Orleans Raging Cajuns. What a great name that would be. Yeah, no, that would be excellent. I, I heard a lot of people on Twitter who wanted to go to like sort of musical, like groove, rhythm. It's kind of like WNBA when you think about it. Oh, like it fits the WNBA. I'm pretty board. sure, it fits besides the LA Sparks, the NBA. none of the other 11 teams in the WNBA names end in the letter S. Yeah. It's like Sun, ja- uh, Sun Fever, yep. uh, Shock, yeah. Dream, Liberty, Lynx. Lynx, Storm. The fact that we can name this many WNBA teams is unbelievably impressive. Um, <laughs> Do I like the Pelicans? No, I think it's kind of it's a little flaky. If you're gonna go legit bird, and and this is way out there, you gotta go the toucan, and then you get the the beak, the long beak, multicolored like the Fruit Loops guy, yeah. and then everyone's eating Fruit Loops in the stands. That can be their thing is like Fruit Loops because they're the toucans, and then someone could bring a toucan on their shoulder. There's a lot of great things you can do with that name. Underused name in sports. If I started a franchise, we would be the Toucans. You know what I like about birds? When you get a bird logo, you got to make them a little mean. Check out the Myrtle Beach Pelicans, yeah. single A baseball team from yeah. Atlanta Braves. Check out that logo, solid logo. I actually used to have a Myrtle Beach Pelicans hat. And you know Very what? Awesome. With the Toucan, especially because the NBA needs revenue, you just Fruit Loop it right on the front of your jersey. You got the Fruit Loop logo. You got your number. You got the Toucans. You're now we're really going WNBA because the WNBA actually has yeah, has right. businesses the on needs, the jersey. The NBA needs revenue too. So they're thinking about doing that. They're, throw they're the thinking Fruit about Loops. the little patch right here. Throw the Fruit Loops on there. You got the Toucan. You're good. So I'm going. I guess I'm going Raging Cajuns. I, I can't think of anything better. Now, right now. what is 
Nowlands. Go to Nowlands. Don't Nowlands. be New Orleans. Nowlands. Toucans. Nowlands. Title <laughs> topic of the night. Toucans. I love it. Do you like that Bron Bron was named the Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year? I think LeBron can win it any year. But the guy's going to win like three more championships in the next four years. So any year the guy can win it. But I mean, this year he won the NBA title finally and won another Olympic gold medal, leader of both teams. But there's other routes you can go for the Sportsman of the Year. Yeah. Let me throw a name out there for you who's going to be in the news for the next 15 years but won't have a better chance of winning Sportsman of the Year except for this year, 2012. Monte Teo. Look, the guy is great. Mm. Heisman candidate. Mm. His grandmother died. His girlfriend died within the same week. Still is playing. Still is killing it for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But I have an even better Sportsman of the Year, and it's actually Sportswoman, and it's actually Co-Sportswoman of the Year, Misty May and Kerry yeah. Walsh. Look, 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 hear me out on this one. Like Three it. time gold medalist. They're always happy. They're always perky. They're always down for an interview. They're always shaking hands with the other team. They're always giving all each other a little pat on the butt, you know? Okay. Always holding hands. <laughs> holding hands during the entire Heather yeah. Cox interview during every yes. Olympics. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> look. And then, look, then Misty May would go on those really awkward, like, in the camera, like, shout outs to random people. And I was like, yes. get off the screen. <laughs> it's really awkward for everyone. Yeah, so I'm going... Kerry, Kerry Walsh, Misty May, they're done. They're separate as teammates. Misty May is now retired, I guess. Kerry Walsh is going to stick around. Kerry Hopefully. Walsh Jennings. Kerry no, Walsh Jennings and Misty no, May trainer. No, um, I don't even remember. I have one in my last name. I don't know. I forget what it's called. Anyways, a hyphen. hyphen, hyphen. A hyphen, yes. So I'm going, I'm going with those two. How, how great would that be? It would be good. I want to talk. You brought up Tao. And I want to bring up the argument that I created a few days ago that I'll unveil a little more Saturday on my show on why, ha- why he should win the Heisman and why he shouldn't get any accolades more than just being a great linebacker and being a top pick in the NFL draft. Top <laughs> 10. The guy's not the best defensive player in the country. It's that simple. The best player on that defense is Looney Nix III. If you're not the best defensive player on your team, you shouldn't win the Heisman. That's as simple as it is. If you're not the best defensive player on your team or in the country, you shouldn't win the Heisman. Louis Nix is a better defensive player than he is. It's just fact. So let's stop with this Manti Teo crap. Invite him to New York. I don't care. He should finish third in the voting. Colin Klein two, Manziel one. Let's get that out of here. Buddy, this I'm is done with Teo. Sportsman of the year. Sportsman I'm done with. Yeah, you shouldn't win Sportsman of the Year because he's not a great. He's not I the just, best defensive player on his him. team. I just nominated him. And I'm I taking that nomination and I'm throwing it off the table. I didn't say you should win. I, I actually like my choice. I got to deal with May the month Walsh. of this Notre Dame stuff, and I'm going to give you the proper perspective here, people. Let's get this Notre Dame. All right, who's your sportsman of the year? My sportsman of the year is not LeBron, one. I love the fact that he's wearing all black and that, you know, just kind of for, you know, he's a villain and, you know, oh, my God, everyone hates LeBron, which everyone does and probably should. It's well-deserved. I like him better because of the stuff he's going to say. The thing is, and I like your Misty May, Kerry Walsh. Oh, I'm all over it. I just thought of that and I was like, genius. There's not really, no one really stepped up as an individual this year to win Sportsman of the Year, so it makes sense to give it to LeBron, I, winning the NBA title and, and being the MVP and things of that nature. It makes sense. But you can nominate teams. Teams have been nominated no one else Red has Sox been, in 04. No one's really stepped up Tom this Brady year. Tom Brady in 05. Has anyone really stepped up and really caught your eye this year? Last, year, individual last year's sports? weird one was uh, Coach Pat Summit and Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Well, yeah, the, the Summit one makes sense. Yeah, that's what she was going for. Krzyzewski through. and Summit. Yeah, I'm all right with that. But I don't know. Uh, so I, I would say I don't like it that LeBron Sportsman of the Year, but really not much else you can do about it. You know, who? The guy could win it any year, probably. Yeah. Any year that there's an Olympics. You could have given it to like a Gabby could've, Douglas, I guess. Have, uh, you could have given it. Or, or the, the a. Fierce uh, five. The you Fierce Five could have been Sportsman of the Year. You know what? You could have given it to Phelps. Why didn't you give he, it to he Phelps? He wanted to wait. Well, it's like, like he wanted to wait. Again. You know, we're not going to Or um, Missy Franklin. I'm, I would have gone. I Missy Franklin will get it in, in four years. Yeah, she probably will. She'll probably. That makes a lot of sense. Mine was great. You got to be a champion. You got to be got to be a champion. Franklin won gold. Got to be a champion, and they're not going to win it any. There's never going to be another time for May Walsh. Yeah. I like that pick. I like that pick a lot. Nice. That's all we got for you. A week away from finals. We'll Hope be back Christmas episode next week. Christmas episode next week. Maybe a little bit of coal in our stockings. Who knows? But as always, hopefully you guys lower your stress. Watch some TTR. Have some fun. Take a deep breath as you go into your finals week. It'll all be all right. I don't know if your GPA is that important to get the job. Got to say thanks to Tom Lima before we get out of here. Yep. Sam Allen's also in here as well. Give her a shout out. But that's all we got for you guys. See you later. Tip your waiters. Have a good finals week. I know I will.
I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Woo! Gross. Right now. 